that I'm not going to work in. All right, so now this is the bottom, this is the top. All right, so I'm going to turn it over. Okay, so now I want to um, make four corners here. So, and this, you know, you want to think about if you've got your seam, if that's going to be um, part of the corner or part of the side, um, and where in relation to the corner you want that to be. So it's probably not best to make that a corner, but you know, I'm going to make it just that side. So I'll make my corners like that. And I'm just kind of marking them across there. Like so. so I got four places. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a V right here down to where I marked. So I'm going to um, just come over about a fourth of an inch on each side of that corner mark and then cut down towards my, um, towards this mark here to this point to make a triangle. Looks like that. All right, so then I've got this triangle piece. So for my next one, I can just use that as a kind of a template. Or you can just mark it either way. And I, as I said the last time that uh, hand building is something that's relatively new to me, and I'm by no means an expert at hand building. And I'm probably doing something wrong, I'm sure. And, uh, and I apologize if I am. <laughs> but this is kind of how I've adapted. And uh, it seems to work for me. And uh, I have no formal hand building thing. So that's the disclaimer. All right, that's three. And then the last one. Like so. Okay, all right, so now I've got my four corners cut out at an angle. <clears throat> and so basically I'm just gonna push those in together. Now, if you want to, um, when I did this one, I did not bevel these, I just kind of worked them together to make that point. But you can bevel these if you want to make the connection. In which case, I actually haven't done that before, <laughs> but you would kind of, you know, just cut like a bevel here. And then you would do kind of here, like so. So that when they go together like that, then you're just going to push those together and then work your seam together. So I'm just working the seam here and then pushing from the inside. And again, you can take your paddle or you know something and just kind of lightly tap that. So that one was beveled. This one is not. So I'll just put it together like that. And it kind of makes it, you can see that this point sticks out a little bit more if you don't bevel. So the when you do bevel it, kind of goes, you know, makes a little more smoother transition. Oops. It's hard to do this in that angle too. Okay. I'll just work these together. So, okay. All 
All right, so now I've got kind of this bottom. And if you wanted to make your vessel square in correlation to these um, corners that you've made, you could do that uh, just by squaring up, you know, here as well. Um, but I don't particularly care for a drinking vessel that's square. I've never found them to be very satisfying. So uh, I'm just, I just leave it around at the top, even though it's square down here at the bottom. All right, so now I'm going to make a bottom. And I'll take some of my leftover slab here. I'm going to set that on top and then just kind of trace around there. Oops, so cut that out. Okay, so now I've got my bottom piece. And that's a little bit uneven, you can see here. So I'm gonna cut that a little bit more even. Just like that. Whenever I'm cutting the clay like this with the knife, I always find it works a little better if the knife is wet doesn't stick so much. All right. With that a little bit. And you can use slip here. I just, you know, I'm just using water, but you could put both slip, wouldn't hurt. All right, and then I'll put my bottom on there. Get it lined up. It's not exactly the same every way. It's all right. I'm not real precise about these things, and you can be as precise as you want to be. I'm just not uh, particularly, you know, interested in being that precise. But, um, but I know some people are more so than I, and that's okay. So just tap that band and kind of go around the edges here. Tap, tap, tap them. That kind of smooth it. And again, the same here, you know, you could like, you know, trim this down if you wanted it to be uh, flush. Um, I'm just gonna kind of leave it in there like that. But, you know, you can cut that away and trim it. if You don't want that like that. And then I'm gonna take my big wheel here and just kind of roll around for some texture like that. And so that's that with the base. <clears throat> now, if you want it to set up a little more, you can put another little foot on there. So you can take another piece of slab. So I'm going to use what I cut out here. And I'm going to cut another one out of this piece. Just trace it. Cut it out. And again, being as precise as you want to be. <clears throat> so now I can just put this on top of that to make an extra foot. Or if you want, you can cut out a little bit the center. So I'm going to just kind of go in about a quarter of an inch or so from each side. And cut out the center. So I just kind of have a foot ring there. And then I can put that foot ring on top like so. Again, I'm going to tap it down. Use my brush here on the seams, kind of work those seams a little bit. Same on the outside. 
And there the step vessel is done. Well, let's do one last thing before we finish. Uh, what I like to do, and since this is uh, sometimes with the slab that you make in this way, you know, it's maybe kind of thick. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of go around and pinch the rim. Uh, to round it and make it a little thinner. And also we'll kind of just slightly flare it out just a little bit. Like that. Patrick, we have about 10 minutes, just so you know. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So there's that vessel, it's all set. Uh, then once it's dry, I'll come back and kind of clean it up um, like that. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, let me see if I can do this other one really quick. I have one. Yeah. yeah uh, it's about something else, but if I do in clay at home, uh, if, I don't yeah. have a, uh, if I don't have a slip mat, Mat on there. What can I use? So you can use just some. Uh, if you'll take some of your clay, like little pieces, and yeah. just put a small dish with some water, and let them get really soft, and then yeah. you can just kind of squish them up with a fork or um, you know anything just to kind of make a a slurry oh, out of. Oh yeah. I mean, um, I'm. I don't mean slip. I mean the mat under the clay. When He's you... talking about the board you're using. Yeah, the board. Oh, okay, the board. So, oh, yeah. uh, okay, so you can use anything, like you could use a towel, you know, an old towel to okay. work on. Uh, you could put on your table and work on that, um, or anything that's flat. A uh, piece of cardboard, you know, you could use a piece of cardboard uh, that was heavy cardboard. Of course, it's going to absorb some of the moisture from the clay and soft. Um, but you could, um, you know, put a, uh, I don't know, you could maybe wrap it in uh, foil or something. I don't know how that would work. But, uh, or you could use an old sheet pan from the kitchen. You had an old sheet pan. I can't hear you, Lena. I can, I can't, I still can't hear you. I see you talking, but I think your audio is turned off. Still can't hear you. Okay, <laughs> but maybe one of those things maybe will help. So anything flat or uh, cardboard, whatever. All right, so I've got my other piece here. So I'm going to do my other vessel. And again, it's the same kind of thing. So with that one, though, I'm just going to do this real quick. So what I did with that one was I cut out my uh, piece. Same, it was about nine and a half inches as well. So it goes nine and a half. And that one was really tall. That one's like seven inches. I'm gonna do this one six instead. And uh, like that. Let's cut it here. And then there. Okay. So uh, what I did with this one. Uh, was I kind of thinned part of one end of the slab and then wrapped it over. So the way I did that was I took my, my rolling pin, which is here. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of starting from about here, I'm just going to roll and thin that very edge with my rolling pin. And you could use, uh, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a, a wine bottle uh, or, you know, a glass bottle of some kind uh, or a piece of uh, PVC pipe, tube, anything like that. Okay. The more 
texture on there. All right, now for that one, so what I did, uh, now I'm gonna uh, bevel this edge. Again, like that, just for the overlap, so it's not quite so thick in there. And I'm just kind of working quickly on this. I would I would take a little more time in general, but just trying to work kind of quickly. So now I'm going to just kind of overlap again, and I'm letting that thinner edge just kind of come around on that side like so. And then I'll leave that as a you know a gesture. It's part of the decoration. And then again, you want to finish out the um, the seam. And the way that I made the bottom for that one, I took a little bowl like this, and then I just took one of my leftover pieces of slab. It's a little used all over, but. Um, and you can just kind of cut out a circle, a little bit larger in your bowl or whatever you're using. Texture on one side. which would be the outside, so it goes down in your bowl. And just push that down in the bowl. And then put this piece on the top. And And what, uh, so with this, you can either cut that flush, you can just fold it up if you want to make a kind of a gesture like so. Um, with this one, I just kind of uh, joined it together. I didn't uh, lap it over. I just kind of cut it off flush and then worked the seam together. But this is a different way you can do it. Like that. Over. And then, off. and then, of course, you can tap it around the bottom of the seal. And then I put some feet on there, uh, just made like we did last week with the trays, uh, just some small um, kind of coils, tapered coils, to make a few feet, you know, like so. Any questions? Does anybody have any special requests? Uh, I'd love to learn how to pull handles. Okay. Oh. All right. Because I'm really oh. bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pat, there is a video on our YouTube channel that has curry. And, you know, I think it's one way of doing it, but he does demo the demos i don't know the it's probably seven minutes long okay. so um you could check that out but okay. we could also do something i yeah. have several fails <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, dip, I'll be ready to do some handles next week okay. uh, so next friday we'll do all handles i'll make some different uh types of pieces that would be uh, and then uh we'll do different types of handles on all those pieces that would be so. that would be really helpful to me. Okay. All right. All right. So next week, handle Friday, eleven o'clock. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye, Liz. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. Bye. 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 You all. Have a great Stay day. Day. Stay safe. Bye. 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 I love your background, Susan. Have faith.